All right, what's up, guys? Uh, Y'all know the drill. Today we got a little video on transistors. Um, so yeah, I think this might be slightly longer than usual, so let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so up until this point in the class, we've been talking a lot about ones and zeros, uh, various binary representations, things like that, but we've all kind of been doing it on pencil and paper. We need a way to actually represent these ones and zeros and manipulate them inside a computing system. And so the first little piece that's going to help us do that is the wire. And wire is going to be the physical medium used to carry our signals, so our ones and zeros. And in CircuitSim, as you can see over here on the right, a one bit wire has three distinct states it can be in. First one up here at the top is dark green. And this, mean the this means the wire is carrying a low voltage signal of zero. Uh, similarly, right here, light green means it's carrying a high voltage signal of one. Now, there's a special third state, which is a lot of times represented with a Z, called the high impedance state, and it's going to be represented with the blue in circuit sim. And this means that no signal is being driven to the wire, okay? So there's nothing on it. No signal is being used on it. So... I want to make this point really clear because sometimes I'll see this confusion where people think that, oh, the wire's dark green. It's got a zero on it. That means, you know, it's not being used. And that's not the case. Uh, a zero is just as valid and carries just as much information uh, as a one. OK, so a zero is a signal. Do not get that confused. OK, blue is where there's no signal being driven to the wire. Zero and one, they both have signals. OK. Uh, and I'll also put a link with the uh, documentation for CircuitSim on wire color in the description. There's a little more information on uh, like multi-bit wires. Uh, but right now, these are just the, uh, the basic three for one-bit wires that is important to know. All right. So now that we've got wires sort of under our belt, let's talk about transistors. So we can think of transistors as switches that, when closed, allow a signal to propagate through them. Uh, so up here, top right is a little diagram I got off the internet, which apparently is what they look like. Uh, I don't really understand that. If you have a friend in uh, material science or maybe ECE, maybe they know and they could explain it to you, but I don't know. Pretty much all I uh, care about is the circuit sim representation. And so with our transistors, we have two main types. The first one is the P-type transistor. And the P-type transistor connects to power. So that's a good little like mental note I like to make, our mental connection is P goes to power, all right? And the power is this thing up here that is gonna be the generator of the one signals in our computer, and ones being the trues, okay? So the power up here, and the P-type can only connect to power. And what we know about a P-type transistor is that when its gate input is a zero, so when the line being fed into its gate input right here is a zero, this switch will close. And we know that when closed, the signal can propagate. So we can combine kind of these first two, 1.1 and 1.2, into our 1.3 statement, where we say that when an input of zero hits a P-type transistor, so right here is its gate input, it will propagate this strong one that's being sent from the power. Okay, so right now, we know that there's no signal being sent to its gate input. So this one is being sent down. But because this switch is still open, since it didn't have a zero as its gate input, its output, also called the drain, is floating, okay? So no signal is being sent through this transistor right now, okay? So on the other, uh, other hand, we also have the n-type transistors. And these n-type transistors connect to the ground, which is represented by this, this triangle right here. And as you can see, it's sending out that zero signal, okay? And the n-type transistors, close when it's gate input, so when the thing that connects right here, is a one. So we can thus say that when an input of one hits an n-type transistor, it will propagate the strong zero signal. Okay, this is very important. If you need to just kind of memorize what transistor does what, uh, I think that would be very helpful. All right, so next thing that we have is talking about logic gates with transistors. And you might be wondering perhaps, like, why do we care? Why would I ever need to and two pieces of data together? Uh, what's that going to do for me? Well, we can think of each 
thing that we build as like a building block. And once we are able to do logic gates like ANDs, we can start making things like adders. Uh, we can start making things like multiplexers, which will help us pick uh, a given output from a number of inputs. Uh, and these are all going to be used to make uh, a data path and will help us on our way to making a fully functional computer, which is pretty interesting uh, if you think about it, in my opinion, at least. All right. So here comes the part that I think a lot of people get confused on, which is actually deriving a logic gate. Uh, like, how do you make the transistor diagram for a given logic gate? And in my mind, I like to think of it as this sort of two parts uh, process. The first one is I like to imagine what the gate is and then think about what the gate inputs must be for that gate to be true. Okay. And then once I have that, I got that expression in my mind, I like to see if I can make that happen by connecting the power, which is, remember, our, our generator of, of ones, which represents true, uh, to some setup of p-type transistors. And remember, p-type, because it connects to power. Uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and see if we could do this for our first gate, which is going to be not. So I'm thinking about the not gate, and I know that for the not to output a true, it's one input needs to be false, okay? So I'm gonna connect one p-type to the power. And so here we have our not diagram. If we wanna sort of trace it, we have our input here, which is zero. It's gonna propagate all along this wire. This is a p-type transistor, which means when this input of zero hits it, it's gonna close, which allows the one to go all the way down and to our output. And note that this one signal is going to carry along this wire all the way down to here. So it would be a problem if this gate, this, this n-type transistor, excuse me, were to close and have the zero hit this wire as well. All right. But we know that because this signal is going to be the same for here and here, only one of these is going to be able to close at a time, which is going to prevent that uh, short circuit from happening in this shared wire space. All right. So not kind of the most straightforward one. Let's try it with maybe a little bit of a trickier one. And that would be the NAND. Okay, so we're thinking about a NAND. A NAND in my mind, that means not AND. When is a not AND true? Well, a not AND is true when either A or B is false. Uh, and A or B in this case being the two inputs into the NAND gate. So a NAND is gonna, it's gonna output a one signal whenever at least one of those uh, is false. So when I see this either or, the first thing I'm thinking is parallel, okay? I need these p-types to be in parallel. There need to be sort of multiple paths that this one can take to get into, uh, or to, to propagate a one towards that output. Because if we think about it, if we have A, B, out, or I'll say NAND, all right, zero, zero. Yeah, that's true. Zero, one. Yeah, that's true. One, zero. Yeah, that's true. The only time a NAND is not going to be true is when they're both one. All right. And so if we're thinking about that, the one, one, that would mean that if A is one, well, this isn't going to be closed. So it's going to block this signal. And B is one. Well, that's not going to be closed. So that signal is not going to propagate. All right. So that would be the only case that uh, it would not propagate a one to this uh, output. All right. So yeah, just to sort of summarize that when, when I come up with that condition for when the gate output is true and I hear myself saying a or B either, or I'm thinking parallel. Okay. And now you might be wondering, well, your method of thinking, you think about the P type transistors. You said, what do I do with the N types down here? How do I know what to do here? And this is where we're going to go to our really wise looking dragon friend. And he says, whatever setup we choose for the P-type transistors, just do the inverse for the N-types. Okay. So in other words, if we chose parallel for the P-types, as we did here, we need the N-types to be in series. Um, and this is going to help. Well, for one, it's going to help make sure that we don't short circuit. If we had these N-types also in parallel, any time that say A and B differed, so like zero, one or one zero, we would get a one propagating onto here, but also a zero coming in. And that would uh, that would cause a short circuit. Everything would turn red in circuit sim. 
Uh, if you did that in real life, uh, things might start smoking, which would be bad. We don't want that. Uh, so yeah, just remember this rule. Whatever setup we choose for the p-type, do the inverse for the n-type. All right, cool. So we got NAND under our belt, hopefully. Let's move on to NOR. So when I think of a NOR, I'm thinking that a NOR is going to be true when both A and B are false, right? Neither of them can be true. Neither NOR. So both A and B are false. When I hear this AND, I'm thinking got to be in series. So our P-types connected in series. And if we're thinking about what it means to really be in series, it kind of reminds me of that, uh, that one scene in Spider-Man where Doc Ock is trying to get to Spider-Man. So Doc Ock, one, trying to get down to Spider-Man. Not only does this one have to pass through the first P-type transistor, it's got to pass through the second one as well, okay? So if just A is a zero, uh, it's not going to be enough, all right? It'll get stopped in its tracks if B is a one, all right? So that kind of, I hope, helps visualize the concept of what it means to be in series. And back when I said both A and B had to be false, uh, yeah. So hopefully uh, this helps illustrate with the NOR as well. And like we said earlier, because we put these in series, we're putting these in parallel. Okay, cool. All right, so you might be thinking, why was your strategy to only think about the p-types and the power uh, when making the diagrams? This is just kind of a matter of personal preference for me. It's a totally equally valid way if you wanted to say, or think to yourself, well, when does this logic gate become false? And then try to work backwards with the n types coming up from the ground. Uh, I believe that method is called pulled down. And then the one that I described, which is what I'm, uh, you know, I prefer is pull up method, I believe. Uh, but yeah, just a personal preference. Uh, it's a lot more intuitive for me to visualize when something is true versus when something uh, is false, I guess, if that makes sense. All right, and now you might notice we only did three of the logic gates. So why, where is and, where is or? I feel like those are more straightforward. Why'd you do not NAND nor? Well, once we have uh, NAND and we have not, you can put the output of your NAND into the input of a not. So we'll say and, we can just make that a NAND fed into a not. So a not, not and, is an and. <laughs> Hope that is, yeah. And then same concept with an or. Is a nor fed into a not. All right, so I hope that kind of method of thinking about it is clear. Um, I don't like to, to recommend memorizing as a skill. I always like to, or to sort of prioritize and emphasize actually learning why things work. But say it's Sunday night, you've got a quiz tomorrow. What I just described with the thinking about, you know, when the gate output is true, it's just not clicking for you. And you want to be able to recognize transistor diagrams or be able to draw transistor diagrams. Uh, you know, this is a chart that you can memorize if need be. Again, I don't like to use memorization as a crutch. I would say stress uh, actually learning it. But uh, yeah, if you want to pause take a look at this. Not almost hard to mess up. Just remember the P type goes on power, P power, and N goes to ground. NAND, you got the P types in parallel, N types in series. NOR, you got the P types in series, N types in parallel. And then once you got the big three, being these, uh, you can pretty much easily make AND or OR. All right, so let's think about maybe an example. Someone asked me to include tracing, so we're going to do that. All right, so, oh my gosh, look at this. This is ginormous. You might be a little overwhelmed looking at that. And say you were given something like this and you were tasked with finding the output for a given input or maybe even to fill in an entire truth table for this expression, uh, what would you do? What steps could we take? So I'll say, you can brute force trace this. You can say, I'll look at, uh, signal A, and I'll look at signal B, and I'll see when does this close, and where does the signal go, and trace it all the way, but if you have a lot of that, it's going to be really, really inconvenient and kind of tedious to do it, 
So what I like to do is when I look at this, I like to break it up, break it up into sections that I can recognize. Okay, so in this case, I'm looking at maybe this first part, and I see, okay, we got A and B, they're going into P-type transistors in parallel. That looks like a NAND to me. And then it's connected to a knot, okay? So I'm thinking, I'll use pink for this. This section is A and B, all right? And I know that that's being used as one input, all right? The output of that is using as one input into this second part. So before we do this sort of last part, let's look at what this is. And in this case, I'll use a different color so it's clearer. How about red? Well, I see it's three inputs, which doesn't change my way of thinking, but um, yeah, because I'm just looking for the pattern of what the transistors are in. In this case, I see that the P-type transistors right here are all in series. So I'm thinking this is a NOR. So this is something we don't know what the operator is yet because we will do that when we get to the far right uh, logic gate. But I know this is A, NOR, B, nor C. Okay, and that's the second input. And this last part, well, kind of looks like what we <laughs> had up there at the top left, where we have our P type in parallel. So I'm thinking this is a NAND. All right, so once we got that, you see how we've looked at this really confusing big transistor diagram, broken it up into manageable pieces. And each manageable piece goes into a Boolean expression. From this Boolean expression, you could use a bunch of different ways to, uh, to simplify it down, but you'll end up getting something that looks like this in uh, circuit sim. So yeah, we had A and B going into a NAND alongside with a NOR of the all three inputs. All right. And uh, I kind of just made this one really quickly. I think it turns out that this circuit always outputs one. So not a very useful one, but for the point of tracing it, I think it's fine. All right. So I hope that this cleared some confusion up. Uh, if it didn't, feel free to comment. Uh, as always, Piazza, office hours, great resources. All right.